So we're back in Chicago at Despo Audio, and I'm here to check out the vintage gear that they have in the store. And I'm not just here alone. I brought everyone here to check out the vintage gear. Tom's here, Spencer's here, and we're gonna see what kind of cool stuff we can find in Chicago. Is there vintage hi-fi in Chicago? I think there is. Did you see something cool over here? Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I, I saw this right away, like walking in here, this uh, Panasonic receiver. I haven't actually seen one of these in our store, mm -hmm. but this is kind of one of the cooler receivers I've seen. What's wild about this is it looks massive, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah. kind of, it's kind of related to kind of how they do the MCSs where it's not really totally packed on the inside mm -hmm. and it's a lot of just big box style so it is neat that you can like go through you can you, can you hear this can you hear the uh the train all day the controls are really cool in here they shine with the light you got little notches as you go up you do feel that and patrick actually commented one of our videos and said what that notch is called but i don't remember and i'm never gonna remember and somebody said i'm an idiot because of that and that's okay wow so <laughs> But you do have the notches on the volume on there. So they did put some work into these. A lot of the times when you see like the more off-brand, I know it's Panasonic and its techniques, but you know, this is more probably an off-brand build for them. Uh, one of their lower models being 15 watts per channel. And so it's nice that they put that stuff on this. Now this is the RA6100, but next to it's the one you were on. The LXI is just awesome. This is something you don't see a whole lot. This is kind of like when a little bit of the digital got incorporated with Hi-Fi. The fact that it's 75 watts per channel, we've never had one of these in our store either. It's just a really cool piece. And the fact that it puts out 75 watts per channel vintage is just incredible. I like touch sensitive buttons, a lot of electronic stuff going on. It is fantastic. It is really cool looking, catches your eye, the wood cabinet's nice. It's probably early 80s because you started to get the digital tuner in there. You can see right in the center is a giant display, kind of like the Sony's do where the digits are really big. Now the one downside on this one is where, where you do have some of the notches on the inputs and the controllers and even on the volume, you hear that? If you go to the input selectors, they do feel very plasty where they look really cool and they light up like they have that like chrome look to them. They feel a little cheaper than a lot of other receivers, but it is really cool to look at from afar. We got a giant Pioneer. We know, I love all yeah. the Pioneers. Did you see the 1010? <laughs> I did see the 1010, but I gotta get through, I gotta get, get the 850, you got the 1010, so you got different years. So you got the the 76 right here. Everybody likes the 50 series. A lot of people like over the 80 series. What do you like better? I like the 80 series more. More meters, the better for me all day long. I like the VUs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we're, the 80 series has all that. I think a lot of people go with the 50 series because it's built a little better. So like Duderman loves the 50 series and he'll tell you all day 50 series or 80 series because it's build quality. But the 80 series does kind of look better for me too. So 2230, 30 watts per channel, 22 series. Rants are very popular. Solid as can be. Again, you can't go wrong with Rants. Such a warm, beefy kind of tonality to it. You still get all the clears and the upper highs, the upper mid range, but just some Balls on all the Moran stuff. Balls? Balls. So the one thing you do see on the 2230 that you only usually see on monster receivers is it does have the mid-range control. So a nice feature on that that you usually don't get to, you get a receiver that's like 100 watts. I love the mid-range control. I don't know about you. you yeah. You're all in EQ, so is that like, why would you want a mid-range control? Well, when you just have the treble and bass, you can kind of get into some weird like you know, your mids might sound scooped, they might be off, so you can kind of balance it all out when you have that. Does it counteract the loudness at all? It can. I might I might turn the loudness on and maybe turn the mid down a little because it might give a little bit of a hump depending on what, you know, receiver it is. They all sound a little different. Very cool. So now we're going to do the 1010 you were talking about. Go ahead. This thing's massive. Uh, I think this is one of the most underrated Pioneer models ever made, 100 watts per channel. The 1010 in general, I feel like doesn't get as much props as like the 50 series or the 80 series, but 
if you have one of these, you know what you're working with. This thing is just so cool. The only difference here too, is they did change over your input selector here to button format rather than the old school. That's older than that one. Press, really? Yeah. This is 60s? That's, no, that's 74. 74? This is 76. Really? Yeah. This is, oh, I don't know. Well, so they didn't, they didn't have this on all the models. So like when you do like the 525s and stuff, so that's this yeah. series. So this is oh, in the 30 sense. series. So you get the 525s, the 535, oh, stuff like that. So it's only like the top couple models have this push button, but it was only their bigger one. So that's actually before that one. Oh. Have you listened to that one? I don't think so. It's no. the first receiver from the stereo war. So it's the first 100 watt okay. receiver. That's Pioneer fired the first shots and okay. they lost. But you know, they won for me. What do you give this one? <laughs> so these look really nice for me but the one thing that i don't like about these and one reason i do like the the ones with the black dial more is i think you can see the display a lot better when you're doing like a 2230 rather than this silver series here because it, especially with either way led or incandescent that display is hard to see during the day and at night sometimes those lines kind of go in together now this one being 130 some watts because it's 2330 so you get the 130 and the b sometimes it can vary a watt or two yeah. um but that's a that's a true monster receiver so like the 2385 we have one of those and they're like this you know it's massive yeah. but if you look at the 100 watt version of the pioneer the pioneer is bigger than your 2330 so where this is more power and i'm sure it's actually i don't know weight wise they're probably pretty close but it's not like overly massive so sometimes that can be too big especially when you take it out of the shop so uh, April sent it the other day. So April's like when you, you see these 980s in your shop or whatever, and then I go home and the 980's so much bigger because it's in a house environment, not in the shop. It's nice when they're a little bit more low profile like that. And talking about low profile, the next one mm, is when you, way. right? You like that? <laughs> see, yeah. I've been doing this a little while. <laughs> so you have a Tamber TR3030. And while it's not the most powerful receiver, it's more rare than a lot of receivers you may see. You don't see a ton of these Tambergs. This whole collection, all of them are gonna have the model number right on the top, so it makes it really easy for everybody to see. So I don't have to be looking like I did on the other side trying to figure out the model number. You have lots of options here. Tape monitors, phono. I don't even know what all that is. Oh, that's presets. What's the one we have at the stores? The Nagamichi 700? Yeah. So some of these, when you press the presets, it actually moves the tuning dial to where it is. It is, like the Macintosh has one like that and stuff. So I don't know what it looks like lit up, but it's a nice piece. And all the other pieces for this set will match. They'll probably have handles, they'll be this color. Tamburg did stuff different. And segueing to doing stuff different. Mm -hmm. And getting out of the, the vintage stuff for just a quick second, right? Yeah. So doing stuff different, and this is something that not a lot of people have done recently, and that's make something truly kind of vintage looking, right? So you have, this is the NAD 3050 limited edition with the wood case. Very hard to find. They don't. They sold out like instantaneous. If you got a pre-order with us, you probably got one. And if you didn't, you didn't get one. And it's probably the same everywhere else. But this is one where NAD said, hey, you know what? Vintage receiver is really cool. This thing is just awesome. I, <laughs> I can't believe that we're actually looking at one yeah. in this location. They're one yeah. of the rarest receivers to get right now. They sold out, I want to say within a couple hours. And I have one in my living room. I very much like it. I like that it's vintage, but it's modern. It can do, you know, HDMI. It has the wife approval, which is cool. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're able to get a 3050, and if, if you don't get this one, if you get one without the wood case, it's okay. So it comes with the meters, mm -hmm. a little less expensive. I think the wood case adds $73 to the price, yep. just so they can match it to the year. And the wood case is actually just kind of installed over yeah, uh, they, metal case, so. Oh, yeah. uh, but it does look cool, and I wish they made a little bit more of them. Maybe they'll make that as a side thing, I don't know. Very, very nice. So if you didn't get this one, get the regular 3050, because it's cool. I think the last piece, really, for the truer kind of vintage stuff, at least in this section, is the Pioneer, just the SA9100 integrated amplifier. I'm a big fan of the integrated amplifiers from Pioneer. Again, I think they're built really, really well. I think they're built closer to that 50 series of receiver that they made. They have matching tuners made for all of their integrated amps, but in this day and age, who really listens to the radio? You can't this say that on here. Like everybody on here listens to the radio. What are you doing? Oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Example. You can also stream to it, but not to it, no, but you, you can. A, you know, 
is working you know, around Blue Sound Node or something like that. I always felt because like, we're both from the pro world, and whenever you take the tuner out, you know, and it's just an integrated amp, it just like that looks like a pro piece. It yeah. just looks much more serious. It's a serious piece, so and this one actually holds its value really well. So the one thing with the 9100 is it's super beefy. It's actually really hard to work on. There's some quirky things with this that make it a difficult repair. Um, and something that something like this and some other vintage units require more maintenance than others over time. And this is one of those units that may require some maintenance over time, but it sounds really good. It's really clean, has lots of options. But it's just something something about it is it's it's really nice. And popular, very popular. Very it draws you in. Draws you in. So drawing in down the bottom all the way along the store, there's vintage speakers. So on our way down here, I figure why not why not look at some of the vintage speakers? Now you do speakers, I do speakers, you don't really do speakers, but you know about vintage speakers, you listen to stuff all the time. Yeah, I listen to stuff all the time. <laughs> so let's look at what we got down here. Uh, this has your classic JBL look. I, I'm a big fan of these vintage JBL speakers, and a lot of that also has to do with the designers leaving and going to Pioneer and then me liking them better. I like the presence now. So what would you do with that? How would you use, because well, I, so, I, I, I don't use any of those controls on my speakers. I like everything flat, but yeah. you're into that. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm really not sure exactly what these do. It's probably pretty simple and you just like look it up, but mm -hmm. balance probably between the two tweeters. So rather than just turning one up or down. Yeah, so this is going to be your mid, this should be your high. So it's an EQ for your, oh, for your mid range driver just, and your tweeter. I, I, I like how they, okay. They, they put some different words instead on of a it, pot, Yeah, instead of a pot, they put something in there so you're gonna take a screwdriver. It's probably good for the the normal music listener. You just give them high and low, they're like, I don't understand. But you say balance, presence? Like, well, let me get more presence. Let me bring more like balance into my life. Let me bring more balance. I need, yeah. I need that mid-range more balance, yeah. so I like it. Now we have some spend doors. I am not familiar. I'm not familiar. Yeah, I'm not familiar. I don't know that they come off. I've been asked about them before, but to be honest, I've never gotten my ears on them enough, so I can't really sway someone one way or the other. Nice red. I like the stands. They're the old school style. I would, I would honestly be surprised if this was original. It could just be the years. Maybe, maybe it is. So, then going back to original, you have your original KLHs here. Yeah. On the newer KLH stands. Yeah because we use those for everything. Yep. And they should be used for everything. But you were playing with these earlier, So right? these are super cool. These remind me of 901s. These are the AR, the MST slash ones. Again, super cool. Tom even pointed out, this is a very like AR-like design. Now, again, I personally haven't ever gotten my ears on these things. They remind me of the Bose 901s in style, and I'm sure they are meant to kind of shoot sound out in a lot of different directions. Two things directions. Are, yeah, because they come straight here. Why? This, this has series, nothing. The yeah. tweeter, I guess, is in. Typically, that's what it is on speakers, right? Like on the warped lens, right? Isn't tweeter? In yeah, this is going to be your, your So inside. that's right, that's your left. That's They're all about clarity and stuff. So, I'm sure they sound very clear. I feel like they did take a lot from the Bose 901 look, especially Series 1. If you looked at the Series 1 Bose 901, it literally has the same type of fabric, has the same style. So if you're like, you know, where, where AR is a popular speaker brand, but if you're not like an audio file type person, you don't know what AR is, but everybody knows what Bose is, you're like, oh, I can get the 901s for that much money, and I'm sure the ARs are probably cheaper. And so that might have been a selling point why they designed it. Maybe it wasn't, but it makes sense that that might be why they went with that look. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this baffle thing. Yeah, you know what? Just tell me in the comments what you think everything on here does. Okay, but I, I'm going to say one thing. So this is going to direct that the high pitch out all over the place. I don't see how that... Well, it makes too, too much of a difference. Then you have your, your controls here for your tweeter and your mid-range, okay? So that's gonna just make it real easy. Oh, that's smooth too. Wow, I like that. So that's gonna show the the level on your tweeter and then this one will control the level on your, I really like that. Then there's this. Mm -hmm. no. So <laughs> you, you wanna go or you wanna go? I'll I, go. I think that it is, Definitely, again, to kind of shoot sound out in multiple directions, make sure that it's not like a standing wave coming right out of the speaker, so you get the best possible clear source, so there's no standing waves at any point. So the idea, right, is 
that when sound's coming out, you're not going to get straight reflections coming back off of a wall, that it's already breaking up those kind of reflections from happening before it leaves the speaker. One thing this reminds me of are the new Polk speakers. Because Polk did that too. They did this weird design in their driver. I don't know. It's pretty cool. No matter what it really does. But I think you, hit it, cool. I, you hit it spot on yeah. with why they did that. I don't know what it's called. But I also don't, <laughs> don't understand. Tom, do you They're have any input on why yeah. they would do that? I... No. Would you want to see that? I would definitely have the grills on. You would have the grills on? Oh, they look nice. Sensor? Yeah. Grills off. I just let them hang. We're getting wild. <laughs> grills off, bras on. These are pretty large Scots, the 197Bs. Uh, they have switches also, but they're more, you know, you have three notches for your your levels. And it probably just takes away instead of adding every, anything. So most of them are going to be where, you know, you have it on your high setting and then it takes away as you go down. So uh, that's the speakers. But then there's more up here. Tom, what's over there? Carver preamp. Container. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, I'm more interested. What's down honestly, there? Yeah, there's actually, there's more stuff over here. Where do we stop? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the biggest speaker crafts I've ever seen. Do you see that? I've never seen the speaker So speaker crafts are, usually it's like a value amp, but usually channel? they're this big. Yeah, okay. And they're like two, two channel amps. I've never seen one that's like a, this large. So, and the, the fact that it's this large and only does 65 watts per channel is interesting as well. But it, does it do eight channels? Is that what it's saying? Yeah, it does eight channels. So I guess that's why. So it's probably built with all separate amps boards all the way across. A nice two channel Occhio amp, M282. Those actually sound fantastic. You got your Sonance. Oh amps. yeah. The, the oh, you series. like that? Yeah. Well, these are the ones when we do the bulbs, like they take the 14 volt. The ones with the, with, so that's yeah, like the this. M508. So it's a totally different, it's not different the same echelon. Thing? No, that's oh. more of an Integra, oh. bigger, bigger, like this would be like the baby consumer model of those. Okay. Okay. And then those are like massively heavy with giant meters. Over here, you got an Anthem. Yeah, it's a preamp, but it's a two preamp, man. And that's interesting. I was gonna say it looks like a, one of those um, Mojo decks. But it's it like looks a like camera. a Mojo deck? It just looks very simple. It reminds me of a counterpoint. Yeah, I can see that. Mm -hmm. So these probably click. Yep. Same type of design as the counterpoints. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if it was close to the inside, but who knows? Got your Carver Tudor preamp. What's interesting is a lot of times these preamps have there's like weird rubber knobs mm -hmm. and this doesn't. So this is actually a well-built one. So it's an AD preamp, so it's more meant for audio video, but you could totally use this as a two channel preamp. It'd be totally fun. Probably still has monitor switches on it, even if it's for laser disc and video. See, there you go. Let's see if any of them are monitors. Yep, tape monitors. So you can still use it as a two channel preamp. Nice car over there, got a Rotel. Rotel, again, built like an absolute tank. Yeah, straightforward. You got your fluoro scan, TX6800 Pioneer tuner here. If that lights up blue, I'm not sure. I think it probably does. Maybe it doesn't, I don't know. It's just like all the, like the other Pioneer tuners that we got? Yeah, yeah, it's just a lower model. Oh, I just didn't so know. this was, they made an integrated amp that actually went with this, mm -hmm. uh, which is probably like the SA6800. It's a basic integrated amp. This is their like more baseline model then and probably had three inputs and that was your tuner for it. It is by no means a tuner like the 9500, which we'll see in a minute because there's one of those here. So right here, now you don't see these at every audio source. This, you know, this place is legit, right? You have your Pioneer rack that I love. I'm a collector of these. You have a spec one. You have the EQ down the bottom. You have the TX9500 one, considered to be the best tuner Really ever made a lot of people think that now some people may argue me but I think a lot of people anybody that's had it will agree that that's a really really nice tuner you see it even has the mount so these tuners you know they didn't come with rack mounts same with the eq the uh, pioneer actually made a separate handlebar uh, and tray for these racks where you would sit the tuner in and the eq so you can see the back here this is how it sits in the tray and on the top, there's actually like these little uh, pieces you screw in that holds the face plate to the front so that it stays on there. But basically you fill up an entire rack, put a rotor roll on top, put a turntable on top, and it makes a nice looking piece of audio right there. So 